Hi, in today's video, we will cover bar charts using Plotly library. We'll be covering these topics, and at the end of the presentation, we would show you how to create a static image which you can use in Word or your PowerPoint. We'll be using these three packages, ggplot2, Plotly, and dplyr. We'll be using the mpg data, which comes with ggplot. So if you don't load the ggplot2 library, you won't be able to use it. So our first chart, you notice that our first chart is actually a ggplot chart. We're just using the data which we created in previous slide. And we're just giving x as manufacturer and the stat as the count, and we get this chart. So Dodge company has the highest number of cars available in our, our data set. The easiest way to convert a ggplot chart into a plotify chart is by using the plotify command, which comes with the plotly library. So if I use plotly ggplot chart, which we created in the previous slide, this chart, we can simply convert this into um, a plotly chart. You can see the difference between the previous chart. The previous chart is an image, which is a ggplot output, whereas this is an interactive chart. You can see that it's actually interactive. You could zoom in, zoom out. You could highlight a particular area. You can reset it and all those things. To create a plotly chart, we can use the plotly command plot underscore ly. The data set could be the data uh, which we want to use. For example, in this case, we are using mpg data set. And x is the manufacturer, the manufacturer. And notice that we got to give a tilde sign, a squiggly line uh, sign in the beginning of the, of the x and the y um, variables. Notice that in this case, we have only given x variable. We haven't given any y variable, the reason being that sim it's simply counting the number of records. Uh, so there are 37 rows, which has Dodge as a manufacturer. So that's why it has counted it as 37 automatically. Let's recreate the data again. We want to use the same MPG data set. We want to group it by the manufacturer. And then we want to have the tally or the frequency. And this is the result of the data set. We got 15 rows manufacturer in the first column and n or the frequency in the second column now let's see how we can place the data labels in in our uh, plotly chart using the text position command if i position the text text position equals outside the the, the data labels comes outside the um, bars but if i use the text position as inside you can see that the text is actually placed inside the bars now. You can also control the width of the bars. In this case, we have added another command called add bars width equals 0 0.9. And in the next one, we have reduced the bar width by saying width is 0 0.3. You can see the, the layout being different now. Now, how do you color each bar with the same color? You can do that by giving the color command. Color equals I and the brackets black or any other color which you want. And if you wanted to color your bars differently, in this case, we have said color equals tilde sign or the squiggly line sign manufacturer. That means for each manufacturer, we'll get a different color. To hide the legend, you have to give the show legend equals false within the layout command and you would see that the legend has gone now now what if you wanted to selectively color a bar in this case we wanted to color the highest bar which was dodge which has 37 cars as is red or green you can do that notice the command we use the if else command and saying we want to find out wherever the data is maximum wherever the value of um, n or the frequency is maximum. We want to find it out. And then we want to, we have just given two colors just um, to, to show you the difference, max or not max. And then for the max color, we want to plot the color as red. For the not max color, we want to plot that as green. So you can see that um, you get um, a legend also for max and not max. You can obviously hide the legend if you want. We we will show you in the next few slides. 
Now you can also have your own color palette. So in this case, we have 15 manufacturers. We want to color each bar based on the manufacturer. For each manufacturer, we will have a different color. But these are the colors which we are going to use. So for example, the first one would be magenta, maroon, and so, so on. So because there's 15 manufacturers, you will have to give 15 colors in this case. Otherwise, you will get an error. You can also control the tick angle or the angle at which the, the text is placed. It's called um, tick angle. In this case, we have changed it to minus 45. And you can also change it to 90 or whatever you feel like or zero. And notice that this command is actually given in the, in the layout command. So this is part of the layout. And you're saying that x axis, I want to, I don't want to have any title up there, but I want to have the tick angle at 45 degree for minus 45 degree for, for these um, elements. Now, you can also have the hover text. This is a um, interactive chart which is normally used on a web page. So you can actually hover on each bar and you can see the text there. For example, manufacturer is Dodge and count is 37. And that is coming from this hover text command because we have told it to paste manufacturer. So the text manufacturer and then the actual manufacturer in the front, for example, manufacturer becomes Toyota and then a new line given by a backslash n command. And in the next line, we want to say count equals n. n is the frequency which we have in our, in our data. Now customize the headings. You can also put the title up there, title at the top. You can have the y, y axis label and the x axis label just by giving the title equals x axis title equals y axis title equals. And you got to use the layout command to do that. So it, it has to be placed within the layout. Now selective annotations. In this case, we have highlighted this row by giving the word highest and with the arrow. And that can be done by giving this add annotations command at the end. We are saying that X, we want to find out, we need to find out this location. So this location is given by the X values and the Y value in this case. So in the Y, X value is coming from the column where we have the highest frequency, for example, this. So the manufacturer which has the highest frequency is this one. And then on the y axis, we want to go now, we want to go up. And how much up we should go is based on the n or the frequency. So we first of all, we find this row. And then we start going up and then we find the location where we want to place the text equals highest. Now you can also change the orientation of your legend. You could have the legend as, as a vertical uh, placement or a horizontal placement, which is this one. This is um, an example of vertical um, orientation, which is by default. You have to say orientation equals V. Now at the end, we can also save our chart into a static image by using these two libraries, HTML widgets and the web chart. So the first command is saving the widget or the or, or your chart in, in your um, drive as a HTML file, which I've done that. Now, the web shot command, as the name suggests, takes a snapshot of your um, chart. So I'm using the same file which I created in this instance, giving it as a URL, and then saying, I want to save that file as a PNG file on my drive, d backslash temp, and then give a delay equals four, because this is 
um, um, web-based or interactive chart. It takes a bit of a time to appear on your on, on your console or your on your screen. That's why we have given a delay of four. And with that, we come to the end of this video. We have covered all these topics. I hope you found this information useful. Thank you very much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.